Ann Arbor's talk station, 1290 WLBY. Last week, we talked about the presidential library for Barack Obama. Today, we head back to Chicago as we focus in with Blair Kamen on Damien on Design. Blair is with the Chicago Tribune, Damien Farrell with Damien Farrell Design Group, local architect. And gentlemen, today, George Lucas comes into play. I had not heard about this until I started reading Blair's uh, columns on it, Damien. Yeah, he, he, he sort of ran, a, ran aground in uh, San Francisco. And uh, now he's in Chicago. Uh, this is sort yeah. of an interesting journey. Yes, uh, a journey worthy of a uh, Star Wars, uh, <laughs> Star Wars hero. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's and full of drama. Uh, absolutely. What is he proposing, George Lucas, Blair? Well, George Lucas wants to build a um, museum of narrative arts, uh, which would combine. Um, his um, realist paintings by people like, um, um, oh gosh, I'm blanking, but realist paintings, um, his uh, film collection, mm -hmm. uh, and as well as, or as well as Star Wars memorabilia, um, and he wants to do it on a site that is on Chicago's lakefront, uh, between. Um, Soldier Field, the football stadium yeah. uh, on the north, and um, McCormick Place, the convention center on the south. Okay. The site is currently um, a surface parking lot as well as a, a structured parking lot. And mm -hmm. um, this has aroused an enormous controversy in Chicago. Um, the There is a federal lawsuit uh, that's been filed by um, an organization called Friends of the Parks, an open space advocacy group. And it is, um, you know, arguing essentially that uh, the city of Chicago had no right to give George Lucas this land for free mm -hmm. and um, that the museum should not be allowed to be constructed on the lakefront. Now, you could argue, I guess, because those paintings you were referencing uh, include Norman Rockwell. Yeah, sorry, Norman Rockwell. And, that's uh, and, that's the uh, artist I was looking for. And, mm -hmm. and the enormous popularity of Star Wars, of course, and right. all the right. George Lucas paraphernalia that goes with that. You could argue that there, there obviously is a place in a museum for those kinds of things. But this structure that has been proposed is like nothing Chicago has ever seen on a lakefront. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think um, what most cities would hope not to see on their lakefront either. Yeah, <laughs> this, the, Lucas selected an architect, Ma Yan Song, uh, from uh, Beijing, and uh, he unveiled a design last year that um, looks like um, a series of uh, white mountains. Um, it's um, uh, a kind of um, a collection of these mounds that would be nearly windowless and sheathed in um, marble mm -hmm. and topped by uh, something that looks like a flying saucer that would contain uh, a restaurant. Um, people compared it to all number of things, um, a pile of salt <laughs> that you use to, uh, you know, uh, salt the highways when there's winter. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, just people went crazy with negative right. uh, analogies. Um, I think it's important to say that uh, the design was very much preliminary. Mm -hmm. uh, Mayor Rahm Emanuel, uh, I think, kind of uh, held it at arm's length to some extent, saying that uh, it was likely to change. And indeed, I, I think we're uh, pretty likely to see version 2.0 okay. uh, sometime later this summer, if not later this year. You wrote in your article in the Chicago Tribune, Blair, the real problem is that Lucas has saddled Ma with an overly ambitious program that calls for the museum to house everything but a recreation of the fictional Star Wars bar habituated by <laughs> freight pilots and other dangerous characters. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's, it's, it, the, the program is huge. I mean, in, in San Francisco, um, I think they were looking at roughly, well, this is roughly three or four times right. the size of the museum they had. Uh, wanted in San Francisco. And, um, you know, it's just, the late, what you have to understand is, I mean, I think m m people would ask rightly, you know, what's the problem here? I mean, you've got um, a parking lot, a surface parking lot 
uh, on your lakefront, and here comes uh, a guy with buckets of money, and he wants to build a museum there. Are, are you guys crazy? In you know what what why are you opposing this? Mm -hmm. And so it's very important to understand that the lakefront in Chicago is a sanctuary of open space. It uh, Chicago is a very dense city, uh, and the lakefront has always existed as a kind of relief uh, valve from that. Right. And there even are laws which you know protect the openness of the lakefront and. Um, so that's what's at issue here. In other words, the, the big, um, r the reason that, uh, park opponents, uh, park advocates, I should say, are against this project is that it would crowd an already crowded stretch of the lakefront uh, with yet another large building. Mm -hmm. It's, it's like, um, essentially you're, cre you'd be creating like a wall of large buildings, Soldier Field, the Lucas Museum, McCormick Place, in uh, and really, you know, um, restricting, uh, you know, openness yeah. uh, in in this area. That's what's at issue here. And and in other words, people have said, um, why not build it on other sites um, that are west of Lakeshore Drive, the main highway that cuts north south in Chicago. Um, I've suggested that, um, and you know, uh, there's a, there's a site, for example, a couple miles west of, uh, or, pardon me, a couple miles south of this site, where one might uh, be west of Lakeshore Drive, uh, have still have great views of the lake, and uh, help uh, boost economically uh, downtrodden areas. And there's land there. There's <laughs> there's land to give him there. And and why are, why is Chicago giving him land? Uh, you know, uh, they, they, Rahm Emanuel's big priority here is tourism mm -hmm. and boosting the economy. Um, this is seen as a, a major economic development plum. Well, I think it's more uh, than the presidential library will be. Mm -hmm. I think there will be more it, people going to see Star Wars <laughs> than they are to see Obama's papers. Yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think one issue, though, is, you know, will this museum have staying power? Uh, the Star Wars... Um, stuff in in it really makes up a relatively small part of Lucas's collection. Oh, really? It, it, yeah, it, it isn't just a Darth Vader museum, although okay. uh, you know it's been called that. Um, there's these realist paintings by Rockwell and mm -hmm. Wyeth, Andrew Wyeth. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the you know the digital um, uh, art. Um, one question really is, you know, how does how do you as a curator organize? this kind of disparate collection into mm -hmm. something that's a coherent whole and something that, you know, really means something that isn't just a, a vanity project, as, as some people have called this. I mean, the, the museum would go um, in an area of Chicago called the Museum Campus, and this is located just on the southern edge of downtown, the right. southern edge of Grant Park. And, you know, there you have... Um, three great museums, the Field Museum of Natural History, the Shedd Aquarium, and the Adler Planetarium. Essentially, their themes are natural uh, history themes of the earth, the sea, and the sky. Mm -hmm. And the question is whether this museum really has the stuff to belong to that, to join that great trio uh, with its transcendent themes. Uh, it's unclear uh, at this point whether that's going to happen. Um, I mean, now, one interesting thing is that, you know, uh, Lucas has uh, hired a curator who um, put together the Walton's collection down at the Crystal Bridges Museum in okay. Arkansas, and yeah. who also used to be the, uh, run the uh, Toledo Museum of Art, uh, okay. not too far from you. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that, you know, that's a potentially a positive sign, but he's got to stay, you know, what are the what are the things that make this uh, disparate collection hang together and give it some coherence and uh, some kind of, uh, you know, real coherent narrative. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just un very unclear at this point. Yeah, well, yeah. So what is the next step? Well, the next step is twofold. Number one, I think we're likely to see um, new designs mm -hmm. uh, from the Lucas Camp and Ma Yan Song, the Chinese architect. But number two is in the courts, and that is where things really get interesting. Um, in uh, er, 
earlier this year in March, um, a federal judge ruled that a lawsuit against the project could proceed. Hmm. And um, um, he suggested that the state might have to change its laws uh, for the museum to move forward. Well, in fact, uh, at the behest of Rahm Emanuel, mm-hmm. um, uh, Bruce Rauner, the governor of Illinois, and the Illinois legislature passed legislation that c- helped clear the way for both the, uh, the Lucas Museum and the Obama Library to be built along, uh, either along the lakefront or in areas near the lakefront. Uh, and that happened uh, in, in, the sp- in the spring session. Uh, of the legislature. So the question is, with the legislature having done that, um, how will the federal judge react? Will he just fold his cards and say, oh, you know, go ahead and build your museum, George? Or will he say, you know what, the state uh, legislature really overreached. It really didn't have the authority to um, open these lands to um, uh, this use of this museum use, mm. and will he, you know, hit back? That that's where the honestly the real action is, even more than in design, because one can like the design or not like the design, but when a federal judge says you can build there or you can't build there, that's kind of the ultimate authority. And isn't, yeah. isn't this, gentlemen? Isn't this the old the age old question that every city in America is dealing with and development on? how you maintain open space, mm-hmm. uh, the aesthetics of a community. Yet it's you, you, you want development, you want economic development, you want your community to thrive as well. You do, but I, I think I think here yeah, this is this is precious land, you know. Um, there are not many cities that have the presence of Chicago um, of this in fact, are, there, are there any that have the presence of Chicago mm-hmm. on, on a lake? Um, that you know it's when you look at, I mean, McCormick Place as a building is large. There's no doubt about it. But it's a very background building. Um, and the That's o- true. Yeah. And, you know, it's and, and, it, and this design in its initial <laughs> in its initial iteration was anything but a background building. Exactly. It was very foreground. Lucas, Lucas wanted an icon. Yep. So did the city. It really stood mm-hmm. out or stuck out like yeah. a sore thumb. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's the issue here, that if you're going to build um, on this, you know, if you're going to build on the lakefront, you want something that's quieter, that invites, you know, people, um, you know, gives people, say, a rooftop uh, a viewpoint, not just a restaurant from which to experience the lakefront, maybe a, a green roof mm-hmm. on top, something like that, and, and something that's even underground partly and is, is much more low slung. This is, you know, a mountain is uh, really the wrong metaphor, I think, to begin with. Yeah. We have our mountains here. We have skyscrapers that are essentially built topography. Yeah. They are the mountains of Chicago, and the lakefront really provides relief from those mountains with its sweeping horizontal spaces uh, and of both Lake Michigan and the, the land along it. So I, I think that that's where this design really was off key. Yeah. And um, But it, it isn't necessarily just a question of design. It's really a question of land use and how that's regulated in the courts. Uh, and that's really where this is heading. Um, like the Obama Library, this is a, a drama with many chapters, mm-hmm. and uh, we certainly haven't you know, heard the last of it yet. Well, in, in one of the interviews, uh, Ma Yansong, he said something that really jumped out at me that my immediate reaction was, boy, you've missed the point. And that was that his design would have an impact comparable to Millennium's Park Millennium Park's, I beg your pardon, transformation of a surface parking lot and exposed rail yards into an iconic tourist attraction that has ignited a development boom around it. In quotation, our site deserves something like that. I, I'd, I'm almost offended by that connection of, of tying this to Millennium Park. I mean, yeah, this, I think that's... <coughs> go ahead, I'm sorry. You know, Millennium Park's piece of architecture is, is obviously Gary. It sits at one end. It's low. It kind of floats beautifully. I think personally, I think it's one of my favorite pieces of his. It has this almost samurai hat quality to it that floats above the stage, and I like that. But the rest of the park, it just invites you to wander, and it does in a contemporary way what Olmsted set out to do, in many ways, to put this building in there. And even when you look at the photographs, if you look south towards um, towards McCormack, you turn around, you look north towards the museum campus of all the traditional buildings. I, he's off the mark with a comment like that. That tells me someone hasn't stepped in there and studied this very hard. 
I think I, I couldn't have put it any better, Damien. I think that this is a classic example of an architect parachuting in who really doesn't understand the context, an architect and a client who really don't understand yeah. the context and just want to look at me, icon building. And that's just not what's called for here. Yeah. Um, that was sort of the uh, modus operandi of museums throughout the museum boom of the, uh, the post-Bilbao, Frank Gehry, Guggenheim Museum. Uh, that's what everyone wanted to build, right? A look right. at me, you know, tourist attraction that would uh, change your fortunes um, economically. But I think that we're in a different time now, and it really calls for a different solution, yeah. uh, particularly at this at this uh, almost uh, sacred place well, that, uh, along along the shore of Lake Michigan. And as an architect, personally, I don't know I'd ever want to design anything that would be known throughout its life by a derogatory nickname. You know, I think yeah. of some of the buildings. In our, in our last talk a year ago, or so we talked about some of the buildings in China, the big pants, all right? These buildings right. that have ended up with these strange nicknames because architects have sought to find a new form, and they, and now that we have parametric design, and and just because we can doesn't mean we have to, um, exactly. sort of thing. And yeah. in this forever, that shape, that design would end up with a strange name attached to it. I think so. I mean, the you know the the defense, of course, that architects always come up with is that, well, at least they've designed something that engages the public, uh, and that you know they, they, there's always the Eiffel Tower defense. Everyone hated it at first, and then it became a, lo a beloved a beloved <laughs> symbol. But I think that um, in this case, um, you know, the design we saw was criticized roundly, uh, not by everyone, certainly Frank Gehry, mm -hmm. in fact, defended it or said that Maya and Song should be given an opportunity to evolve the project. So we're likely to see it develop. Perhaps it'll be more modest. But the question really is, even if it is more modest, does it belong on this site? Mm -hmm. And uh, should it, you know, legally, does it uh, is yeah. it allowed allowed on the site? And that's where really we're waiting. You know, that's where the federal judge really has... Um, uh, U.S. District Judge John Dara is his name. That's where, um, uh, you know, he really has an enormous, uh, enormously important role here that's yeah. outside the, the normal um, uh, boundaries mm -hmm. of, of design culture. But the law is, you know, the law really has an enormous <laughs> impact on the built environment. Um, and, you know, we've seen that uh, many times on Chicago's lakefront. Aaron Montgomery Ward, the great mail order magnate, fought lawsuits uh, or battled in, law, in courts successfully to prevent the Field Museum of Natural History from being located in Grant Park. Uh, he cited uh, a language by early settlers of Chicago that said that that park should be forever open, clear, and free of buildings, obstructions, uh, or whatever. And so I think that, uh, you know, it's not just designers and urban designers who shape the architects and urban designers who shape the built environment, it's often the courts. Yeah, that's, that's a very true. good point. We, we don't think about that very often. Well, I'll tell yeah. you something. Looking at this design for the George Lucas uh, Museum of Narrative Arts, it, it appears that it could attract aliens from outer space. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a great way station for them. Yeah. Talk yeah, about great. tourism, we, you know? <laughs> yeah, it sounds like, a, it sounds like a Transformers movie it where, uh, <laughs> like, you know, you'd want... Uh, want those crazy uh, robots to come in and destroy it. Uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll suddenly we'll have gatherings in the gardens of, you know, people in black outfits with with uh, purple triangles on <laughs> <Yeah>. them. You know, <laughs> strange things well, like that. And Chicago has seen strangers, so who knows? <laughs> yep, exactly. uh, Blair, always fun talking with you here. No, Very interesting to hear what is going on in one of our favorite cities in America. Blair came in with the Chicago Tribune on Damian Farrell's Damian on Design talking about this George Lucas structure. And again, like the uh, Obama Museum, uh, still a lot of questions about it. Maybe we should put both of them out on an island on Lake Michigan. They, they, we, could, mm, they could share an island could. together. <laughs> yeah. Isn't Jeannie yeah. Gang kind of working on something like that? <laughs> she, well, Jeannie actually is, uh, has, has been um, working on uh, and is about to open a new uh, public park uh, just to the east of the Lucas Museum site. Okay. It, this is on a peninsula called Northerly Island, and she's actually helping uh, Lucas with the uh, uh, park planning for his, oh, well, for his building. We have yet to see what she's going to unveil either. Okay. Wow.
Well, he's in good hands there. We know that. <laughs> That's true. So far. That's true. Thank you so, so much. Far. Blair came into the Chicago Tribune. Damien, thank you as well. Thank you both. Damien Farrell, local architect here in Ann Arbor. And you are listening to Ann Arbor's talk station, 1290 WLBY.